Hi, I'm David Wilson, and um, I'm here to speak a little bit about my uh, public art for the Raleigh Atlantic Ave Improvement Project. Um, as a public artist, um, you know, I think it's important for the um, audience um, and especially the community, the residents of the city of Raleigh, and uh, more specifically those who uh, live right there in that corridor to get an idea of uh, the art that's coming through to have some, you know, sense of understanding of my process, um, some visuals to go off of, and also have uh, some, uh, you know, feedback and connection with the artist to uh, make the artwork authentic. Um, so my process really starts first with associative thinking. I try to draw on a site's existing uh, landscape, and usually that helps me generate um, some of my initial narrative concepts. I'm always looking for ways to make connections between um, whatever the existing maybe uh, landscape of the uh, area is or whatever the life cycle of that space was. So what were some of the things that were happening uh, in the past um, that maybe are resurfacing through this current revitalization of the community or neighborhood or were there some important places or people or events that um, transpired or used to live or matriculate? Maybe they went to school or worked or you know did a combination of both there in that area. So I'm always trying to pull from um, not just the existing natural environment, but also uh, the cultural and historical landscape of, of a neighborhood or community. And then finding ways to create art elements and concepts that resonate with um, that local community, but also in some ways transcend uh, the familiar. Raleigh has a, a wonderful um, public art collection, and I'm sure you know you see plenty of um, magnificent pieces around uh, your city and things that draw uh, draw attention to you. But I wanted to create something, of course, that could be considered unique for uh, the uh, Atlantic Avenue corridor community, and uh, also be considered a destination for those who maybe don't come through that area that often, but maybe the art, you know, is uh, one of the features along with whatever improvements come through the, uh, the uh, widening of the corridor and the improve, you know, natural capital improvements that are, you know, for the larger project, bring people there as a destination. Um, for my narrative placemaking, I usually uh, like to pull on these four pillars of commemoration, cultural diversity, connecting past and present, and uh, community identity. And uh, with that, you know, those are those four pillars usually, you know, help me uh, first and foremost come up with some initial ideas and um, I'm able to um, run that past, you know, my uh, internal team members, that being like Raleigh Arts and uh, the overall like, you know, city uh, project partners that are working on um, all the other moving parts of, you know, how the art will be uh, affixed um, into the actual superstructure, be it a wall or a sidewalk or some type of plaza or greenway. Um, how can this art commemorate uh, the, you know, again, the life cycle of that neighborhood in which it's going? Um, how can it reflect the cultural diversity uh, of the neighborhood? How can it speak to, you know, everybody? You know, public art is for everyone. It's not just for one a specific group of people. So I'm always, you know, keeping that at the forefront of my uh, method. Um, how can it connect the past and the present? And in that way, I, I do that because I want my art, you know, uh, to remain timeless. You know, I don't want it to look dated. Um, I would love for it to be something that can be enjoyed, of course, uh, here in the in the present, um, but also uh, transport, you know, one back in time in, in a sense maybe through uh, photographs or some type of text or even the color and the form of it or a combination of all those things and uh, not just be um, impactful and inspirational for um, the generation of now, but for future generations. And then how can, can it reflect and narrate and celebrate the uh, community's identity? So with all of that in mind, you know, I did my own personal research and also um, had um, some good conversations with community members and, um, you know, came up with this you know, re resounding, um, you know, ideas or metaphors of uh, movement, um, of course, nature and landscape, um, you know, lots of trees and green parks, you know, families, um, 
you know, children, you know, it's a really kind of family centered uh, corridor there and the primary focus being the uh, Brentwood community and uh, pulled on some of the you know, key, key elements that were brought up during these conversations and also through my personal research were the uh, Raleigh Speedway and then of course, you know, kind of looking at the uh, existing architecture uh, of the different homes in the neighborhood. Um, knowing that this piece will be sited um, on a retaining wall that will be there near the uh, Wake Med um, section of the Atlantic Ab Avenue corridor, I thought it was important to uh, maybe pull from some of Brentwood's unique history. Um, since the overall project is dealing with, you know, moving people um, in a safe and rapid way throughout that, throughout that space, I thought the history of the uh, Speedway um, was an interesting uh, one to some way try to incorporate and um, I generally not I don't try to make that a real literal uh, incorporation into my public art you know so in the sense of not like you know making obvious as obvious references to you know cars or tires or you know things of that sort um, even in the sense of pulling from the architecture I didn't want to uh, necessarily um, you know, put images of actual homes in there or uh, parks or children playing and trees. I wanted to, again, build it with some type of layered meanings of interpretation. So <clears throat> what you'll see in the uh, the next slide will be the, the final art um, that was approved um, for the uh, installation for the public art that will be created. Um, but this slide is, again, kind of going more into my uh, methodology and the metaphor behind it. So. You know, you'll see some abstract color patterns and um, various shapes that rise and fall and, you know, give you the sense of maybe a vibrational pattern. Uh, who knows, maybe when you look at it, you might get a sense of the uh, skyscrapers and kind of the architecture of the Raleigh skyline. And um, those are all good things because that was really kind of what was driving my design. Um, so you see these rising and falling um, kind of square rectangular forms um, that are connected together. And if you pull back from it, yeah, you do get a sense that that is maybe, um, you know, the skyline of the city um, resting in the background. And there we see those kind of bluer shapes there at the bottom and the lighter uh, magentas and light purplish blues um, down near where the white line work is. Um, that's meant to more, you know, show uh, the community, maybe the local businesses and um, residential homes condominiums that you occupy the uh, uh, the living um, areas of families there in the uh, Atlantic Avenue corridor in the Brentwood community. And you have these multiple different squares that are moving throughout the, uh, uh, the, the, the form from top to bottom. You know, again, that's to, you know, denote um, windows and give you a sense of uh, also some type of pattern, additional patterning to the um, to the uh, form. Um, the form also kind of rivals in a way maybe the side profile of a car, you know, a, a Raleigh Speedway car. Again, I try not to make things too one-to-one, -to -one, um, but allow, you know, people to kind of see what they uh, want to see in it, but still find some connection to the uh, history and the, um, the sighting of the piece where it is in the community. And then you see these really kind of quirky line, line illustrations um, that go over top of it in white. And those will speak to uh, the different, um, the diversity of the uh, people who occupy the communities there in the, in the Atlantic Avenue corridor. And I wanted to show, you know, that Raleigh is a diverse uh, city and, um, and doing my community engagement, I do know that there's a, you know, diverse uh, population that occupies uh, the Brentwood community. So I wanted to reflect that through my art. So um, these line uh, drawings could be uh, pulled from uh, some workshops that we uh, are hoping to get um, possibly put in place. Um, we've already done, you know, one, um, and we've done some uh, online, of course, conversations um, via Zoom. So I would love to, you know, find a way to maybe uh, bring these continuous line drawings that you see in white a little bit closer to home and actually have them be either uh, representational of creations from actual community members or actually, uh, you know,
portraits, line art, continuous kind of quirky line drawing portraits of people um, from the community. So uh, with that being said, uh, you can see that this will be, uh, this is just a section of the overall piece, but um, it'll take up uh, quite a bit of that wall and it'll cantilever off that retaining wall along the Wake Med um, part of the corridor. Um, maybe, you know, I don't know, six to no more than 12 inches off the wall. But you'll get a sense um, as you move through it, either walking or driving or on your bike or on your scooter or jogging, whichever way you're kind of moving um, in and out of that corridor. Hopefully you get a different um, story and get a different sense of uh, color and, and movement and texture as you uh, move across the piece and see how the light is interacting, of course, with the layers of the, uh, of the piece, too. So we're looking at a piece that'll be created out of metal and uh, those colors will be applied um, with um, industrial paint, same type of paint that you know would you use on a car, an automobile. So it'll last a, you know, last a long time and have a protective uh, uh, clear coat type of finish over it as well. Um, since that'll be a pretty busy corridor with a lot of you know cars moving through there and you know just a temperate uh, weather throughout this region, it can get really hot. Uh, of course, as we know, or winters could be uh, pretty uh, mild to uh, pretty severe. So you want to, you know, use materials that will keep it looking beautiful over the years and um, afford the city um, the least amount of uh, times or opportunities they need to go back out and you know touch something up or repair a section of this uh, overall uh, piece of public art. So with that, uh, hopefully you get a. A, um, a better idea of what will be coming for that area. And I look forward to continued conversations um, via the city of Raleigh and Raleigh Arts. And uh, thank you very much for um, enjoying my presentation.